Latest purchase on eBay. This is a Harman Kardon HS500, uh, 5.1 DVD player, AV surround type thing. And it's reported as doesn't power up. So let's plug it in and see what happens. Let's try to turn the power on. And it is as described. It is dead as a dodo. Yep, nothing seems to be working at all on that. Let's get it open and have a look inside. Right, let's get this thing apart. We've got five screws on the back here. This antenna socket looks well bent. Uh, HDMI port's scratched up, but that's nothing new from people feeding things from the back. So let's get it apart. I believe some screws underneath as well, and we'll get those off as well. And we've got four screws on the back here. There's one there, here, here and here. So let's get those off. And then hopefully we should be able to just lift or we'll slide the back cover off. Let's see if we can slide him off. Yeah, it's more of a lift. And that's the cover removed. Let's have a quick nose around the board. We've got the CD player, DVD player. Got the aerial antenna tuner unit. Uh, power amplifiers, mains in, down into a fuse, which the fuse looks okay, so that's not going to be our problem. And this is going to be our power supply board, so we're going to have to trace that through and just start looking for some obvious signs of, I don't know, you know swelling of components. That capacitor doesn't look too good, and it does. It actually look like some burning down there. So that's worth investigating. But obviously it's not drawing a lot of current because it's not pulling the fuse, but I will trace that all the way through. Let's use the standard multimeter for that and then check some of these transistors. But yeah, if you want a general overview of the inside of it, that's what it looks like. I'll get a few photos and I'll put those up next. Quick uh, look at this pass by board. Always supposed to have a visual look, but I seem to be missing a few components. I seem to be missing R514 and R513. It's a little bit strange. What are these comp smaller components? Looking a little bit bulged on the circuit diagram. Let's have a quick look on that. R five one three, R five one four feeds down onto this chip, and it looks like from the supply rail. These two. Hmm, I think this board's going to have to come out, I need to have a look at that. I'm not sure if this diagram's totally correct, to what I'm looking at anyway. Um, let's have a look at whipping the board out. 
might be to have a look underneath the board just to see if there is any burning or anything else missing. Okay, we traced through the circuit diagram. Basically, we're looking at the live input through these chokes up to there onto the main bridge rectifier, the output of that feed through this choke, and we're looking for then across this diode the output onto the two resistors, which is R513 and R514, which happen to be mounted on this side of the board. And theoretically, they should be rated at 375k each. So, if we do just a simple continuity test from the live terminal and we trace it through uh, down to this choke. And that's working fine through this choke, out uh, through this choke, which is effectively the, uh, these two chokes here, onto the bridge rectifier, which is our live feed, which we're showing there. And if we put a probe on this one, which is the neutral, and feed it through. And we get continual to air there and nothing across it, so there's no short there. Then the output of the bridge rectifier feeds up to D504. That's per the circuit, circuit diagram. And if we just do a simple diode test on that, we should get a reading in one direction and not the other. And there's this seat, so that's working fine. Well, I've tested all the semiconductors on the board and they all seem to be okay. I've tested the diodes, the FETs, the transistors, um, just using sort of normal multimeter set to diode test. I've marked off what I've tested on the board, there's more than that, but I've got board marking it off so I just slowly went through them all and I couldn't find anything wrong. So then I thought, well, next thing to do now is test a couple of the caps. They look a little bit swollen on the top. I don't know if you can see that on there, but they don't look good. And the first cap I've taken out is uh, this EC504, which is supposed to be 470 microfarad. And this is the cap. And that's what it's reading over there. 1.8 microfarads. And the ESR doesn't look too good on it. So I'm starting to think this power supply has got caps failure. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to slowly work through all the caps, take them off, test them, and I might as well replace them if I'm taking them off. Some of these look okay, but all these ones down here all look swollen. So I'm going to just work my way through them, and give them a test, and replace anything that's looking a bit suspect. Well, it's definitely looking like cap failure. I've only taken the second cap off now, which is supposed to be 47 microfarads at 50 volts. And as you can see by there, it's reading 316 nanofarads. And the ESR doesn't look too good on it either. So I definitely think we've got an issue with the caps. So I think the simplest thing, like I just showed you, said before, is just change all the caps, I think. There's not many on here, there's only these around here. Let's see if we can get this power supply back to life. In summary, these are all the caps that I've changed. They're all electrolytic, all out of the power supply. Every single one of them, other than two 10 microfarads, were all faulty. Totally way out of spec. And so basically what we've done is, on this power supply, we have changed all of these electrolytics and there's two just on this side. Uh, these don't fit that well, but don't worry about that. I uh, hadn't got the right voltage ratings, but I got the correct values, but not the right. So I've just dropped those in for now until I can get the proper components. Just wanted to make sure this worked. Tested all the semiconductors, FETs, bridge rectifier, diodes. Couldn't find anything wrong with anything. Tested all the large value resistors. Nothing seems to have burned or is out of tolerance to, according to the circuit diagram. So we're at a point now where I think we can try powering it up. Now I have plugged it in and we do have 
the orange light just there, which is what we should expect. So now let's just power it up. I've plugged in a monitor and some speakers just so we can test the output. So I think what we'll do is we'll put a DVD in and just see what happens. Well, we'll try powering it up first. I've got my all in one remote control which I've set to the HS500. So let's try power on. And the power has come on. So it's on the display. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's quite dark. The display needs a little bit more brightening. And this ring gear has turned blue, which apparently it's supposed to. Now we get a message on the screen. So I think the next thing to do is maybe try DVD in here. Let's see if it actually works. And that seems to be working, although that does seem to be sticking a little bit. I think we need to do a little bit of work on the CD player. It doesn't look the right speed to me at all though. So that's another job in itself. But I think you get the gist that we're sort of 90% there now. We've actually got it up and running, which is more important. you can hear the sounds intermittent there. So we do have a, an issue with the DVD player at the moment which we're going to have to have a look at. But the rest of the board and the output amplifier seems to be working. Now again that seems to have frozen again. Just a quick test of the radio. That's working fine as well. So we've set it to tuner. And that seems to be working great. PC input. We can scroll through the setup menus. Well, I'll call that a success as regards the power supply. I have tested the voltages, which, according to the circuit diagram, should be on all these pins, and they are correct. There doesn't feel to be any heat coming from the board. So I think I'm going to leave it at that for this video, and then I'm going to have a look at the DVD CD player as a separate video, I think. But this was actually got it up and running, which is the, uh, the original goal.